Few drugs have made such an impact so quickly as Ozempic. Mm. But as millions across the world sign up for an increasing array of conditions, is this miracle drug as it seems? I'm in shape because I run, avoid sugar and do Ozempic. It's the breakthrough drug that's turned its maker into a more than half a trillion dollar company. When I look around this room, I can't help but wonder, is Ozempic right for me? There are a million ways to lose weight. Why not do it through something that isn't as boring as working out? Promising to slash global obesity rates, Ozempic could be a game changer for addiction and even degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It can make a big difference uh, for somebody who has early stage Alzheimer's in terms of how well they can function, perhaps even independently or, you know, in a home setting. In a bid to get to the slimmed down bottom of the blockbuster drug, British author Johan Hari began injecting himself with Ozempic once a week. It was like the kind of shutters had come down on my appetite. I was literally 80% less hungry than I normally am. His new book, Magic Pill, has just been released and details the ups and downs of his almost 20 kilogram weight loss. So, in the words of Johan Hari himself, is Ozempic a magic solution or a magic illusion? Johan's here to tell us about his year long Ozempic journey. Uh, Johan, so we heard a little bit about your experience there, but tell us in more detail what's it like being on Ozempic? The average person loses 15% of their body weight within a year, and it's it's the weirdest feeling. I feel very conflicted about these drugs for lots of reasons we're going to get into, but I'll never forget, two days after I started using it, I woke up, I was lying in bed and I had this weird feeling and I was thinking, what do I feel? What's going on here? And it took me like five minutes to realise I had woken up and I wasn't hungry, right? That had never happened to me oh, before wow. in my life. It massively reduces your hunger. We, we know why I interviewed the leading experts about this. And, you know, this is why 47% of Americans want to use the drug. It's why there's this kind of global stampede. But there's a lot of other things we've got to be aware of as well. To, to really understand these drugs, I went on this big journey all over the world from Iceland to Minneapolis to Tokyo to interview their biggest critics, their biggest defenders. And I think the truth about these drugs is actually quite complicated and there's good arguments on both sides. Well, so... Tell us about that, because you, you write about the potential risks of these drugs. What stood out to you? There's 12 big risks that I go through. Some of them are pretty big. Some scientists think it may increase thyroid cancer, though others disagree. Some risks around pregnant women. For me, actually, though, weirdly, it was a much more personal thing that really got to me. So I've been a junk food addict all my life, and I don't think I realised how much I used food to comfort myself, to kind of numb my feelings. And... When you take these drugs, you really can't comfort eat. You can't stuff yourself. You would just be sick if you did. And I remember having a very painful adjustment where I remember going to a branch of KFC in Vegas. I'd had a really rough day, ordering a bucket of chicken and thinking, oh, I can't eat this. I'm just going to have to feel bad. So one of the things that goes on with these drugs that I think people need to be aware of, there's a lot I go through in the book that I think people need to be aware of if they're thinking about this, is these drugs radically disrupt your eating patterns. And what that can do is bring to the surface some of the five different kind of psychological drivers of why we eat. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You can start to deal with them differently once they do, but that's a pretty painful and bumpy transition. We've heard about the nausea. We've also heard about the headaches. But what about the long-term side effects of a drug like this? This is one of the most worrying things for me. So we originally, it was thought these drugs work mainly on your gut. But actually, we now know, and I interviewed the leading neuroscientists on this, actually, they work mainly on your brain. They're chronically activating key parts of your brain. And the truth is, we don't know the long-term effects of that. No one knows. People haven't been taking these drugs that long. It's my personally my biggest worry. But you've also got to compare that to the alternative, to something the scientists kept saying to me, right? Realistically, for me, the alternative to these, to these drugs was that I would have continued to be obese. I've been obese most of my adult life, right? One of the leading experts, Dr. Shauna Levy, said to me, we don't know the long-term risks of these drugs, but we do know the long-term risks of obesity, and they're really serious. Obesity makes over 200 known diseases and complications more likely. And for most people, the vast majority of people, these drugs either reverse or, or massively reduce your obesity. So really, it's about which level of risk, which of these two sets of risks you're willing to choose. And it's and not an easy choice. I'm not sure I've made the right one. No, no, but you chose <coughs> the looking hot one. It <laughs> 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 was always spunky. It's right? true that <laughs> after I... <laughs> it's true that uh, about two months after I started taking this, my neighbour's obscenely hot gardener did hit on me and I was like, oh, oh tell me again about the health benefits yeah. of the drug, <laughs> right? That's a good side effect. Whoa. So, uh, are you still on it, Johan, and, and will you ever stop? 
for me, I decided to carry on taking it. Different people will look at the big, long risk of the benefits and risks that I go through in Magic Pill and come to different conclusions. But for me, I'm older now than my granddad ever got to be because he died when he was 44 of a heart attack. Loads of the men in my family, including my dad, get terrible heart problems. And these drugs have been proven because they reduce your obesity so much, they reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke by 20%. So for me, that benefit outweighed the risks. But for other people who don't have that problem, will have other issues going on, I totally respect other people will make different decisions about it. Oof. Um, just quick, we're almost out of time. I get, uh, and this is a bad question because that's quite a big answer. But do you think, like, society's <laughs> obsession with a Zempic is more a reflection of what our attitudes are towards food and weight and appearance? To some degree, but we've got to understand the obesity crisis is really recent, right? I think we're pretty much around the same age. When I was born, 6% of people in Britain were obese. It's now 27%. Basically, you had 300,000 years when there were almost no obese humans and it has blown up. And it's not because yeah. we're weak-willed and all the stigmatising things that are said. It's because we made a transition from eating food that makes us feel full to ultra-processed food that doesn't. I go into this a lot in the book. We've got to understand, we've got to undo that shame and stigma by understanding what caused this crisis and looking for the best solutions. For some people, that'll be the drugs, but for most of us, it's got to be dealing with the underlying factors that made us obese in the first yeah, place. there's a yeah. lot there to unpack. Yeah. <laughs> Cheeseball Man may not be the answer in this sense. Um, the book is Magic Peel. It's on sale now. You can head to our website for more details. In the meantime, would you please thank Johan Hari. Oh, cheers, everyone.